So here it is. Here's the battery bank. These right here are 100 amp hour batteries. They're the 370 FR fire resistant CND technology batteries. And so everybody wanted to see these, so I'm currently going to shoot the video on them. All right. And these are grid tie inverters. Grid tie inverters will basically take all our solar power when we're not charging the battery bank and put it back into our house. Now these are island safe. They, if the power goes outside off or the AC coming in the house is off, they will not back feed the line no more. They will not kill no linemen or anything like that like other YouTube guy tried to argue me about. So, for wind solar, I think you need to go back and do your homework. So, them or them. Um, I actually used a breaker box. Now what most people don't know is some of the breakers you can buy are DC rated also. So you check out there. Some of them are DC rated. So you can save yourself some money instead of going to Midnight Solar and spending like 50 bucks a breaker or whatever they charge. Um, this right here I made myself. Um, here's my turbine ammeter. Um, basically I took a bunch of uh, breakers which I can sell you if you need some. Uh, a bunch of breakers uh, and I rigged up my own little box for my wind and some of my solar. I even did the shunt across it, that way I get the amperage and everything and then into a fused uh, fuse and everything and a you know, fuse holder. And that shunt goes to this uh, this turbine meter. But and also goes up into this box as well. Which is my disconnect slash uh, you know, if my batteries get full, it will dump the load. Here's a dump on here. Let's go ahead and dump a little bit of power. And that's 355 watt halogen bulbs. So I got hundred something, you know, 165 watts or so going there. Now, this is one of the better inverters to have for your home. It's out of an RV. It's called a trace inverter. This model is the uh, I believe it's the RV3012. It's a 3000 watt uh, inverter. They're not cheap. They're a couple thousand dollars, but you can find them used as cheap as a couple hundred bucks. And if you do, buy them. I'd buy every one you can get your hands on if you can get them for under 500 bucks. They're very strong inverters. They do have a keypad that's uh, included with most of them. Um, if you get them from the right people, that allows you to turn it on and off remotely. That's what this yellow wire is right here. It goes up to our room to turn it on and off. Um, and everything we use is a Cobra as a backup and everything. You always want to have an extra one to back up. In case of emergency, for some reason, if this guy fails for any reason, which normally won't, but always have a backup plan. Also, we use a, a, a couple frag capacitors. We, we have more than one. This is the one that's visible. I have another one behind the panel as well, behind here. But uh, we use them, let's say you have something like a refrigerator or something that has a harder start on it when it starts up. That usually takes the brunt of it, which we also sell them as well. Um, of course, everything's fused and and disputed all across here. Um, these are some more grid ties. These are island safe as well, so they won't shock anyone on the line. Um, we will be doing uh, more videos about the line out, or excuse me, grid ties and uh, how they work and everything. Um, I just thought I'd let show you these though. But here's these batteries. All these batteries are 12 volts. They are ran in parallel, so my bank is sitting at 12 volts. I, I have a uh, 24 volt bank as well, but you know, plenty of batteries here. So we have lots of power. Um, these are actually ran, these are my 24 volt banks. I use these to split them between, that way I can go 12 or 24, however I need to be. Because if you break them, now the batteries right here would be at 12 volts and such. But uh, these four right here are running off uh, my 24 volt solar panels up top. So, I also got some Harbor Freight stuff too. This right here, of course, is your Harbor Freight, you know, charge controller and lights and everything. It goes over to, you know, there's one in my one of my rooms right there. Another one right here, it's five watts or so. But them are great to have too. Them ran off of its own battery bank as well. These are not the only batteries I have. I do keep more batteries on hand at all times. Um, I just I've got battery stored everywhere. I got more batteries under there. I've got them just stored everywhere. But for the most part, uh, these are all the ones I have right now that I'm using currently in parallel. So 
you know, that's a lot of cranking amps. I have probably approximately 35 to 40,000 cranking amps if you want to put it in perspective by battery power by cranking amps. Um, I have, yeah, give or take, 4,000 amp hour reserve. So, everybody's been asking me to, you know, review this. I will get on the roof more. I've already put uh, stuff up about the wind turbine. But basically what happens is the wind turbine, let's explain that right now. The wind turbine will feed down into this breaker. From this breaker it goes across the shunt and through a fuse. For any reason, you know, if we have surge of power, have a problem. And then the, the wire goes up into the charge controller, our dump. Now, if this meter gets to a 13.8 or so, it will actually start dumping the batteries because that means they're fully charged. Because they float charge, obviously. So they're typically full charge batteries about 12.8. But ours will float up to 13.8. That's what they're rated for. Um, so basically, it goes into that guy right there. And then right here, when they get to a certain desired voltage that we set, it will dump off any extra power here. Now, right here, you could actually put. Uh, Water heater elements. Um, you could put, quite frankly, a lot of different things on here. Even big resistors that will actually heat your home in if they were dumping the load if you're at full power. Or you can even run it. If you were running at a 24-volt system, you could actually dump it back into your grid ties to pump the juice right back in your house. Um, we typically just go ahead and charge the battery bank. Since it's so large, I mean, it really doesn't take much. You know, it's, it, it doesn't get over full too easily. Because we, you know, there's so many batteries, and you figure if you're making 50, 60 amps spread over like almost 40 batteries, I mean, you can kind of do the math there. They're not getting about a couple amps a piece, so it really doesn't hurt them any. Um, there's other, there's another thing you can also do. <sighs> These right here are 12 volt elements. I know what you're gonna say. They're in a bucket lid plastic. Yeah, I'm going to change that. I just did this for, just to give you an idea and show you what you can do with it, actually. Um, basically, you'd put it down into a bucket. Of course, like I said, you'd probably want to use a, put a metal insert inside this lid to make it dissipate the heat. But basically, in a bind, you can take that, hook it to your battery bank, and be able to cook. Cook whatever you want. Or what you could do is put one, take these elements right here and put them in a... Uh, electric little uh, water heater and then there you go you got hot water preheating your hot water or hot water in a pinch um, you know world hit, you know world ends or something you can make hot water and everything um, secondly what you could do is instead of these lights being here we can go ahead and like I said hook them into the one of them right there and voila for the dump we'd be preheating water um, I said there's so many uses that you could actually use you know, the batteries for obviously running your house. You could even weld with batteries in a pinch. I may do a video on that. It's not very, I'll be honest, it's not very safe. But if you had to do it, you could weld with them. I would not weld with this many batteries. I'd probably stick to one or two batteries in parallel or series, depending on how you want to do it. You would need a welding rod, obviously. Um, use caution with that, though, because, I mean, you are basically grounding the battery out. And you can get out of each one of these batteries for a quarter second, they're rated at 5,000 amps a piece. So that should give you an idea on a short circuit. That's how much power is sitting here 5,000 amps per battery, short circuited. So, I mean, if you were to run, you know, two or three of them together in parallel, it's 15,000 amps up to burst rate or so when you're grounding them out welding. So it's plenty enough to weld in a bind if you needed to. I said I may do a video on that, I may not. I'm uncertain at this point. I thought about it, but you know, it's something to think about. If you need to, you know, shit hits the fan, you don't have a welder. I have an extra 120 volt welder, but you never know. You know, if I get in a big bind, I might have to use some of these batteries or some Optimas or something. I mean, I always keep extra batteries on hand. I always keep a staple of every Optimas or whatever, you know. You, get, you got to have more than one way to do everything. And I want you all to remember that. As preppers, or how, whatever you consider yourself, always have more than one way to do everything. You need backups of your backups. So, you know, this is one good way. 
you know. But, you know, other than inverters, uh, you know, and just solar panels, I've got, you know, the wind turbine to do it, and then the batteries have extra batteries, have a generator. So, don't only keep one item and say, oh, okay, I'm done because I got this or that. Have multiple ways to do everything. I mean, if you don't and you get in a situation, you could really have some problems. You want to have backups of backups. And another thing, and you're doing 12 volts and dealing with this kind of amperage, if any of y'all decide to do, you know, big battery banks, make sure you double and triple fuse everything. I mean, if you look here, obviously I got a 250 amp breaker. That way I can disconnect or whatever. Plus, I've got it going to a 200 amp. I, I need to put a 300 here or a 250 fuse. It's just what I had laying around. I didn't want to go to my shop that night and pick one up. I just, it didn't really matter because the turbine ain't going to do over 200 amps anyway. Max I got of it was like 60 to 80. But, you know, it's just showing you that, you know, if lightning was to strike it or something big was to happen on the wire and ground it out, all the amperage would flow from my battery bank into it. So, obviously it'd pop instantly. So, I just want to make sure that I was, you know, thoroughly... <laughs> you know, well fused, and you want to make sure you do that always. Double fusing's okay, kind of stay within, you know, close enough, I mean, that's a 250 and 200, so it's close enough, it'll be fine for how much, you know, battery power I have here anyhow, it'll pop in a quarter second or less anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, I will also probably do a uh, video on these breakers, and show you, tell you what brands are rated for DC, and which ones are not rated for DCs. Um, Square D has some that are actually rated for DC power as well. So if anything, you might be able to call them and then give you exact part numbers or have a, a book about it. Um, another other good thing to do when you're doing a battery bank, get you a transfer as well. Transfer switch to do it the safe way. Um, this one allows me to put a cord in the front from my generator or whatever I need to and plug them straight into it. And it allows you to switch between gen, line, and you know, all your settings there, so, but, I hope y'all enjoy this video, uh, please subscribe to all my videos, um, some of my other videos, we will be giving away some stuff, um, all different kinds of goodies, from cheap stuff to expensive stuff, so, you know, keep that in mind, I might talk to some of my other partners and try to see if we can't get some wind and solar stuff eventually giving away that as well, so, uh, you know, I would talk to everybody I know in different businesses, and like I said, we try to see what we can get to give away. Um, all I ask is obviously just some video responses of what you need and why you need it, and if it's something we're capable of able to get you that's related to prepping, we'll try to do what we can for you if it's available. I'm not saying I, re I can respond to everybody's request, but I mean I can, you know, talk to people to a certain degree. I'm not, you know. I can see what people have or what we can do for certain preppers. It's going to be more like giveaways, stuff like that. I'm just going to go through and say, all right, this person needs this. So let's see what we can do and do giveaways randomly and everything. But hope you enjoyed my battery bank and me rambling on about it. Uh, if you have any questions, just give me a holler.